Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is One Chi. This is actually my first uh, first stream show that I've ever done before. So, I thought I would jump in and we talk some comic books today. As you can tell, I'm a very avid comic book fan uh, by my background behind me and you know what we're about to talk through today. But um, yeah, good morning to all. I know it's very early. I figured uh, I'd either be catching that crowd that's a little older and, you know, maybe looking for a way to ease into their day. Maybe you have kids, maybe you don't, and you're just sipping coffee and, you know, looking for something to entertain you. That's what I'm here for. I, um, I, I've been in the corporate world too long. My sleep schedule is already ruined um, going into the 5 a.m. wake up time. Plus, I do have a uh, four cats and two dogs who keep me up pretty early when they are hungry. So, uh, yeah, I thought take this time where we can just kind of talk nerdy stuff and, uh, you know, I'll let you know what I'm interested in, what I'm reading and what I think is fun. And, uh, Hey, if you agree, that's cool. If not, I'd love to hear some recommendations of different things that you have going on, uh, or that you're into or that you're reading that you'd like to recommend to somebody. Um, you know, I really, think I'm kind of going to go with this channel and, and take it from a perspective of, you know, I don't have a ton of people that I know personally who are into the hobby of reading comics and collecting comics. Um, and I don't really have a group where I can get together and talk with people. So I thought maybe this would be a good spot for us to kind of collectively commune. Um, I know it's, it's even been harder through the past couple of years with COVID to try and find uh, venues and, and people and areas to meet up and, and really get together and, and talk as a group about this stuff. So, um, you know, for me personally, like during COVID is when I started reading comics again, about a year, a year and a half ago. Um, you know, before that I was an avid reader in high school, which was longer ago than I want to admit. Um, and I've tried here and there, like through my twenties, you know, to pick the hobby back up, but there's so many factors, whether those factors are, you know, just money, um, you know, finding other things that take interest or, you know, maybe you start dating a girl and, or, or guy who cares. Um, but it's like, that stuff kind of would take priority over comic collecting. So now that I'm where I'm at in, in life, it makes it a little easier where I've got some roots. I'm not moving all the time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty settled down. I can start to build and grow and get back into that hobby that I've wanted to get back into since I was in high school. Uh, so it's been really, really nice, but I will say it's been a really big learning curve because, oh man, have comics changed since I first started reading them in the late, well, early nineties, but consistently, you know, the mid to late nineties and wow, they are so, so, so different. Um, I have just been going nuts and I had this problem when I was younger and that problem still remains with me is that I want to read every comic book that is on the shelf, but that's very expensive. So I have to be very selective about what I pick up. Um, you know, so I started jumping back in. I'm a, I'm a big Marvel fan, uh, always have been. Uh, but really, as I'm a little older now and looking at the variety of superheroes out there, it's like, man, I'm a big DC fan as well. Um, really love the comic books that DC is putting out. And uh, I've always dabbled. I've never been exclusively like shunning the Marvel or DC side of the house and then going just for the indie books or the non-superhero books. But I really do dabble in those as well. I mean, I really prioritize the superhero books in my reading order because I love superheroes. But man, I want to talk about one today. I read this great five-issue series, and I truly hope it's not over um, because it is just so fun. It's got a very um, Cemetery Man, if you've seen that movie, otherwise known as De La Morte De La More. It's got a feel of that. Um but then mixed with the campiness of like a Buffy or, or like that weekly, you know, like a supernatural, like it was really, really fun, but it was only five issues and they ended it on kind of a down note. So, I mean, I'm hoping it's just like in a break and they're going to pick it back up. But, um, well, since I'm talking about it, why don't we just talk about that now? Let's just dive into it. Right. You don't want to hear more about me. You want to hear about comic books. Um, so the series that I read and let me, let me pull them out here really quick. Uh, gosh darn, where's that? I think I got it over here. I got tons of books that I want to talk through today. Uh, but this one, this series that I read last night, this was freaking awesome. Um, the series is called Digger. And, I mean, that's just such a rad cover. 
And I, you know, I looked it up and I'm like, okay, you know, it looks horror comic based. I love horror comics uh, and horror in general. And I was like, you know, this, this could be really dope. Um, so I bought it. I bought all five issues and I think the last issue that released, released in February or March. And here we are in June and I'm just now reading it. <laughs> so I, um, I went through and I just power read them last night cause I was really looking forward to, you know, just sitting down with something different. I need a little break from the superhero genre. Um, so pick this up and it turns out it's, uh, about two people that work in a cemetery. Um, originally it's two guys, Digger, who is the younger, more burly guy. And then there's an older gentleman he works with named Miner. Uh, and he looks like an old prospector. And they work the graveyard shift in the cemetery. And at night, all of the dead corpses come out of the ground and they have to re-kill them and rebury them. You know, very much Del Morte Del Amore. That was Rupert Everett's role is he was the guardian of, of the graveyard. And he had his companion, Nagi, who helped him clean up the mess. But as the bodies would come out of the ground, he would rebury the zombies. And that was his whole job there aside from, you know, running the funerals and things like that. So I, I loved it because I, I loved that movie. And um, this gave me that that vibe. But then it really quickly turned into a like Monster of the Week type of book. So it started out in issue one. We, we were introduced to Digger. We're introduced to Miner, that character. And we're also introduced to Digger's kind of like long lost love, like the girl that got away, Cherry. And she's married to this local politician who is really corrupt, we find out really quickly, and she just doesn't see it. She runs this little diner where she makes pies, and you can tell she loves Digger, he loves her, but it's kind of that unspoken, you know, the time passed, everybody moved on with their lives, but then they realize that love is still there. So I like that, because it's like a really sweet note and a humanizing note to these zombie killers that are out there digging up and, and killing zombies and things like that that are re-resurrecting um but we find out in issue one you know we get to see all the zombies come out this big battle with digger and miner and um they find out there's a vampire nearby and they need to kill this vampire that's why there's so many corpses coming out of the ground and miner almost dies once or twice and once the fight's done they bury everybody they go back into their into their grave digger canyon miner says i'm done i'm out i quit I can't do it anymore. I'm retiring, which leaves Digger with an open position. So he needs to find somebody. So Digger puts an ad up in, on a bulletin board in Cherry's restaurant, and lo and behold, he gets a call from an alcoholic 25-year-old woman who's just looking to pay the rent because she's two months due. She's really troubled, and she's really got an attitude. You can tell she's got a problem with authority. So... She doesn't read the full flyer, doesn't read the fine print, but she gets and takes the job. So the next day when they show up, when she shows up for work, they're just doing normal, normal stuff. You know, they're, they're digging normal graves, things of that nature. And then at night comes and this fog rolls in. And when the fog rolls in, all the crazy starts happening. And that's when the vampire comes out and starts attacking them in the graveyard. So they go out, they fight this, this Dr Dracula, vampire, whatever you want to call it. And she ends up taking the hilt or the, the handle off of a shovel and staking the vampire, killing it. And Digger's like, whoa, you're a natural. Like, this is awesome. You got the job if you want it. So she takes the job and she's actually feeling really good about herself. And what I really like as we go on through you know, issue two, issue three, issue four. It's the very monster of the week, like I said. So this one, they're hunting. Um, Digger is teaching her how to track a Yeti. And so that's the Yeti. And so they fight like a Yeti in this one, which is really good. In issue three, they fight. Oh, <laughs> I actually really like this one because the issue starts with the girl feeling so good about her new job, about her status in life. She actually stopped drinking for the first time in like years and so she gets up early she starts putting those skills to the test that digger's teaching her and the yeti rips off the roof of his trailer so now he needs to find a new house so we have the classic real estate agent who's also a witch episode issue and this was a lot of fun like 
I was laughing a lot through this because that's that camp. That's that cheese that comes in along with it. And, you know, like that Buffy feel, like that early, like season one, season two, episodic Buffy feel. Like it was so comforting to read that book, you know, to read this issue because the, the, the story was so familiar. But at the same time, it was fresh. Uh, the monster was super cool. Um, so we learn, you know, uh, she helps him with, uh, defeating the real estate agent, uh, who is also Cherry's friend. And now, now Digger has a house, which he got on the cheap because, Hey, there was a big monster fight there. This issue, issue four is kind of a throwaway, but we start dealing a little bit more with, um, the girl's alcoholism, how it's affecting her personal life. She meets kind of a toxic AA agent who doesn't really follow the rules and, and kind of breaks them thinking, you know, hey, I've been sober on and off for years. You know, let's just take it at our own time and be and be there for each other. Um, so there's this toxic romance kind of brooding there. And Digger wants to keep her safe because he really has respect for her. And I apologize. I don't recall her name off the top of my head. And, um, so, you know, there's all of these plot points. It's not just monster focus, but the monster in this one was boring. So I liked having the very personalized story to lean on with, with the girl and her alcoholism and Digger and Cherry. Um, Cherry's political husband is, um, you know, he is mayor. He's running for reelection and he is dealt with dealing with some really bad people. And those people are, you know, making a lot of demands of him. He owes them a lot of debts. And so in the middle of like a political reelection party, he pulls out a gun and just starts firing this revolver into the ceiling. And then he runs away, doesn't explain anything to Cherry. And we find this web of um, corruption that he's, that he's in. Um, and actually Cherry's husband is, you know, this mayor, he's running on a platform that is anti-gambling. It's anti, you know, all of that, that stuff. But yet there's this new casino being opened up and there's a guy who is just constantly advertising about it and is kind of putting a dent in the mayor's plans. And um, this person who he's tied up with, this mob boss, whatever you want to call him, he essentially gives him a gun and he says, go kill him. Go kill this casino guy. We can't have him in our town. And he does. He, he, he killed him. Like, point blank. He goes into his house and he shoots him in the back of the head. Like, in the middle of... The, the guy had no idea. And so, when we go into issue five, the last issue that's been released, he's burying a body. The, this is the mayor, the current mayor, who is running for re a re-election campaign, is digging a fresh grave for the man he just murdered. So that's super messed up. Uh, Cherry has no idea, um, but you can tell her and Digger are getting closer and closer together. I feel um, Cherry's not happy in that relationship, but you know who knows? Well, I don't know if we ever will. Um, but going back to why this issue, the monster, it was Vikings. So like Vikings showed up and they put a holes in a boats and I don't know. I just I wasn't into the Viking story. Um, this issue, though, issue five, the last issue that, that came out was dope, though. It had a scarecrow. Um, it had a scarecrow as the bad guy with this giant scythe. And so he's actually, <laughs> they go to the town, like the county fair, and they find the scarecrows hiding in the corn maze and slaughtering people in there. And so they have this cool big fight. But, um, you know, the girl is torn. You know, she's always jumping back. She's always saving Digger. But she's torn. Now that she's found this guy from AA who's, you know, she's kind of falling for and Digger's telling her it's not a good idea. And so the end of this series, you know, as fun as a ride as it was over those five issues, it actually turns out that they ended it with her leaving. She resigns her post. And that was the last panel. I was like, oh, oh okay, well, ah. Uh, I guess the series is over. Like it really like no joke. They like ended it, ended it. Um, so, I mean, I really hope it comes back there. As far as I've seen, I looked online, I did some Googles. I didn't see anything about my next issue or anything like that. So 
It's unfortunate, but it was really good. It was really good. So if you can find it, look for it. If you dig horror books and, uh, you know, you like some of those shows and movies I was talking about, it's by Action Lab and Danger Zone. Let me just get it up in the corner there. So you... Sorry, this is a really shitty webcam. I'm just not realizing how crappy this is. It doesn't autofocus very well. Anyways, um, yeah, Digger. It's kind of a... It, it was great. It was a really fun ride. Um, so yeah, that's some of the, you know, the, the non superhero, I don't like to call them indie because there are books that are non superhero based that are released by major companies that do superhero books. So I just, just say non superhero. And I apologize. I'm a huge coffee drinker. Uh, not sure if my coffee drinkers are in the house here, but that's me. I actually, um, let me show you this. I actually have a Keurig where I can fill a carafe. And I do fill that, and I do drink it, um, especially on the weekends, because what, what is there better to do on the weekends than chill out, drink coffee, read comics, play video game, uh, you know, something like that. I, I know this morning I was playing, again, I wake up early, uh, I was playing through the, um, the Avengers game on my PlayStation 5, and I played it on the PC, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm not good at multiplayer games, so I thought this would be a fun way because I do want to find an online game where I can meet some friends to play with. Um, I've got some some real life friends that that would play with me. We jump around into a bunch of different games though. So, thought you know I never could get into WoW. I never could get into um, some of those other big you know EverQuest or uh, Lost Ark. Uh, what's that other one? There was a Korean game that came out uh, not too recently that people went really wild for, and then the hype kind of fell off on that. I maybe that was Lost Ark. Yeah, Lost Ark, and then New World. I tried New World, so I've like jumped in and tried, and I lose interest in two weeks. And at least the Marvel game has a lot of great story, um, so everything can be played single player too if I want it outside of like raids and things like that. So I. Um, you know, I'm just looking for something. So I was playing that this morning to unlock some more characters and make some more progress. And then now it's like drinking coffee. Now I'm talking comics. Like this is great. What a what a nice day. Um, a couple other books. You know, before we jump into some other things, why don't I show you what I picked up this week? Um, I think I said earlier that I use Midtown Comics for all my comic ordering because of COVID. And um, you know, we the where I live, I'm like the nearest comic book stores are like 40 to 45, maybe an hour away from me um, each way. So I don't really want to drive that every Wednesday. And when I was, it was kind of a bummer because all of the, so as if you're a comic fan, uh, as you know, there's variant covers. And if you're not a comic book fan, there are these things called variant covers. And so they are just different covers of the book. Um, but they're limited in rarity. So, uh, you know, like cover A would be the standard cover, and that's three fifty nine, four ninety nine, whatever the cost of the comic is. It's it's base MSRP. But then once you get into these variants, like cover B could be a limited run of like one in a hundred, and or like only a hundred made or whatever. And so the comic stores usually put a little more of a price to that based on the rarity, or the publisher will put a higher sticker price on it. You know, sometimes, you know, I was going to the comic book store to get my polls and to get my books and all that stuff. And I would be forced to get variant covers and pay an extra dollar to two dollars more because I didn't get there first thing in the morning because I couldn't. So ordering through Midtown Comics has been really flexible for me because I do work a lot in my job, uh, you know, 10, 12 hour days and breaking away to make a quick run to the store or take a break. Like I don't really have that luxury, unfortunately, Um, which sucks because I used to at other places and I used to love going to comic book stores on my, like during lunch and stuff. But yeah, sadly I just can't do it anymore. So stick with Midtown. I can get all the covers I want. I can order the books that like what comes out next Wednesday. I've already got on order. I ordered it that um, this past Wednesday. And then typically I get my books Friday or Saturday, uh, which is fine because I'm usually slow to read books anyways. Like I don't read everything I get the day it drops. I just, 
I don't have that kind of time. Or if I do, I'm too tired. I mean, that's the shitty part about becoming an adult, right? It's like you finally get adult money and you finally get um, to be able to afford the the hobbies and the stuff that you want. And then it's like, you're just fucking tired all the time. Um, Cause, and I don't even have like a physically demanding job. It's just mentally taxing. Um, so <laughs> that's kind of the funny part about how all this, uh, hobby stuff and, and life happens, but I'll tell you, you know, it, um, when I do go through and I, and I get a chance to read, it's like an eight hour event. Like I really, I read comics pretty much every single night, um, for at least two to three hours a night. If I can, um, sometimes it's just a single issue and you know, that takes me maybe 20 half hour, depending on how tired I am or how good the book is. You know, I've found, um, there's a lot of text heavy books, but sometimes those text heavy books just feel a little empty. You know, they've got all these words and this fluff, but it doesn't really add to the substance. Um, and like, I really love X-Men and I love what Jonathan Hickman has created with the environment, Krakoa and, and Araco and all this stuff. Um, but man, they are word heavy sometimes. And sometimes it just feels like they could have said the same thing and half the words and that's fine. Like I'm not complaining. I, I, I like learning new words and, and reading complex things, but, um, man, for a tired brain, that's a lot to take in. So let's dive in. What did I get just yesterday? This is my haul from yesterday that, uh, that came through. And, um, you know, this is just my DC and my Marvel haul. I don't think I pulled my Indies. Not that I had many in there. I think, uh, I think outside of Marvel and, in DC, my non-superhero books were more, I think I had uh, Power Rangers uh, Universe 6, which was the Green Ranger issue. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot. I mean, outside of like horror books and things like that, I'm, I'm collecting and reading all the Power Ranger books because I love Power Rangers. Um, I've got a couple other ones, like ones I can think off the top of my head. You know, I yeah, if it's got Pretty Lady on it, I'll read it too. You know, like Draculina or... Um, things like that, you know, Sheena, um, but I loved that movie when I was a kid. So it's kind of like I, I read that out of principle, <laughs> but anyways, so these are the, uh, Marvel and DC books that I bought on Wednesday, uh, whatever the last week was or no. Yeah. Yeah. This past Wednesday, this is what came out. So I got the, um, action comics 2022 annual, which I've really enjoyed this. I want to talk about this with you guys. The, um, the action comics uh, run right now and, and what's going on with Superman because I, I do, I'm enjoying it. Uh, not as much more than I thought that I would be. Um, I got the Batman annual and of course we got Ghostmaker. We got Clown Hunter on there and psh, I think Clown Hunter is just awesome. I think he's such a fun character. Um, Ghostmaker's pretty cool too. Uh, I, I like a lot of his gadgets. Uh, I like that he's a ghost based thing. Like, and he's got that cool, cute little ghost emoticon that comes up and helps him. Uh, here we go. The road to dark crisis is underway. I know I got issue zero in free comic book day. And so I'm excited to read and see what the hell is going to go on with this. And I feel like there's been a lot of major events, but this, I feel like they're just trying to keep Justice League alive because yeah, really when it ended, when they killed him in issue 75, it really wasn't anything. I was like, okay, it, it was fine. Um, next up, last house, the nice house on the lake issue nine. Actually, um, this is the first issue of this I'm going to read. I've heard amazing things about this and I didn't realize that, it, uh, James Tynion wrote, is, I hope I'm saying his last name correctly. Um, I didn't realize he was writing it, and I freaking love that guy's work. Anything he touches, I, I buy it pretty much. Um, you know, his run on Batman was just amazing. Uh, you've got Something's Killing the Children, which is just incredible. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm really excited. And I'm just going to dive in. You know, like, that's kind of my style. I don't wait for issue 1s. I don't wait for the trade and then things like that. Like, I just start reading it. And worst case scenario, I'll Google some stuff and figure it out. Um, but I... I've just never been the type of person to wait for, you know, the beginning of the next story arc. It's like, if I want it, I'm going to buy it and I'll figure it out. And that's usually the hardest part about comics is like just diving in like that when either you're mid story arc, um, you know, 80 issues deep on a run, you know, something like that. It, it feels intimidating. Like, well, I don't know where the story started. So 
how can I possibly get into comics when I'm jumping in three quarters of the way through or midway through and I don't know anything about the world. I, all I know is the character. In my opinion, that's all you need to know about everything else you can figure out. There are people out there who make amazing, amazingly in-depth YouTube videos that if you can at least find out what the previous story arc was called, they'll walk you through the whole story. Like that's what I did when I was getting back into comics. Um, Joker war was just about to start and I was like, what is happening? Why is Bruce Wayne poor? Well, poor for Bruce Wayne standards, but I was like, what is going on? And I had to go back and find out and read, okay, this is what happened. This is like, this was what happened when Catwoman stole his fortune and gave it to Joker and things like that. So, um, and even then, I, I hope I said that right, but that, that was my understanding, my takeaway of everything. But I mean, there was a lot of work that had to be done, but that's part of the fun is like, I always enjoyed when I was younger digging into the lore, digging into the history of things. Like when we would talk Star Wars, this was way before prequels. And you really didn't have any other idea of what was going on in the Star Wars universe outside of the novels that w would get released, um, which were canon EU. And then the comics were kind of meh uh, back in the day for Star Wars books. And they weren't really considered canon, so why bother? Anyways, I'm on my soapbox here. Let's keep talking about comics, right? So I got the Shadow War Omega. And this, I bought Shadow War on a whim. I kind of like Deathstroke. I just finished season two of Titans. And I thought, okay, let's do it. Let's dive in. Let's, you know, I'm following the story over from Batman and from Robin. And man, it turned out to be a ton of fun. Just a ton of fun. Um... I know there's a Shadow War, uh, I think that's the last issue in, in the Shadow War story, but this has spanned, this story has spanned Batman books, Robin books, Deathstroke Incorporated, um, there's been a couple single issues, uh, most recently there was, uh, what was it, Shadow War Zone, which was a, a one shot which uh, with a collective series of stories around some of those other characters, which was fine, you know, it wasn't anything to write home about, but it was it was fine. Um, all right, so also I got next issue of Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel 38, and man, this has been fun. Kelly Thompson, awesome writer. Love it, love it. Um, the story has been really entertaining. It's it's something different. I've never really read a lot of Captain Marvel books in my past, and so you know, having seen the movie and just wanting to read major, major characters, um, that was a no-brainer, and it it's good decision. I've been total fan of that book. Uh, Ghost Rider issue three. This book is gnarly. If you're not reading Ghost Rider, go pick it up because this book is so gnarly. Issue one was so dope. I was so excited for issue two and I'm not a big Ghost Rider fan. I'm just, again, I will read everything you put in front of me because I just want to read superhero stories. I love them. And, um, that Ghost Rider book was dope. It's so cool. Uh, Knights of X. This has been okay. It's fun. You know, I was reading uh, when I was getting into comics. I was I was reading into Excalibur, and that was so complex with all the Betsy Braddocks and what was going on with all like, these Captain Captain Britons and you know one Silo. I'm like, what the? F this is one of those times where you jump into a book and you're like, what the hell is going on? There's 30 Captain Britons. And I don't know who any of them are, but they're all equally important. And I have no clue what the hell are these portals going to Krakoa? Like that was probably the hardest book for me to kind of get my head around. And by the time I did, I said, I'm not really into it. And now I'm feeling in Knights of X, it's got a very similar feel to Excalibur. Um, Strange issue four or issue three. Um, Stephen Strange's wife is the new... Sorcerer Supreme after he died and it's okay. I'm enjoying it. It's fun. Um, she talks a lot about doing big Dr. Strange things. She's like, she's almost got to like hype herself up and um, I don't know. I kind of wish that she would, she'd be, she's very assertive. I shouldn't say she's not assertive, but you know, the fact that she's got to like talk herself up, she's just very, she's got a big attitude because she's from another world or another universe or something like that. And so it's almost like you get the feeling like she's burdened with being the Sorcerer Supreme after Stephen Strange died. Like she doesn't get why people don't respect her 
because she's big in her other universe. She's like very powerful or well-respected or whatever it is. And I just kind of get that feeling from her. It's like she sees this wearing the cape and having the title as a burden uh, instead of, you know, I don't know if you want to call it an honor, but she certainly doesn't like it. But then she does live up to it. She always saves the day. But sometimes it's kind of like, all right, we get it. You don't like it. Let's get to the fighting. Let's let's progress the mystery. Um, let's see where we're going to go. But I'm not trying to rag on it. It's a fun book. Like, if you like comics and you like Doctor Strange, read it. It's fun. It, I mean, it scratches the itch for sure. And that's really all I'm looking for. I'm not looking for war and peace in these books. I'm looking to be entertained. And it very much does so. Um, X-Men 92, House of X, uh, issue two. Had to get this. I mean, that cartoon was like my lifeblood gl- growing up. Um, I just, I loved it so much. And I don't know many people who didn't. So it's kind of, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's it's cool to see them hearkening back to those days. And um, the stories were so fun. And, you know, they're repeated. They're used constantly in the movies. Um, but I, I just love, I love that animated series. It was such a good, such a great show. Um, it holds up. You know, I still enjoy watching it from time to time. Um, I do... I do own it. Uh, not the, unfortunately, not the Pizza Hut VHS copies of uh, Night of the Sentinels, though. That was oh man, I wanted those so bad. But book it just wasn't my friend at that time. They didn't get me there where I needed to be. <laughs> you know, let me show you a couple things here as well. Uh, a couple things because I I do as you can see I, I buy quite a variety of books. Um, and like I said, I'm a little slow through getting through them. So let me show you. These are the couple of things that I'm working on. Um, I've got to finish up from, from previous runs from previous weeks. Um, so first off, I've got uh, Robin, 14, which, pff, guys, Robin is great. You know, it, I started it, and I was thinking to myself, eh, it's, it's Mortal Kombat. Um, but it totally changed, and you can tell it's pulling from some pop culture stuff, like, again, Mortal Kombat, some Bill and Ted, you know, things like that. But I really got hooked at one point. I think it was maybe two or three issues ago where Robin got a hold of Lazarus fluid and he was going to resurrect Alfred Pennyworth at his grave. And I, I remember reading, reading the book. And at the end I was like, Ooh, like I did one of those reactions because that really intrigued me. Um, so they've really started to evolve, the Robin book. And, and Damian Wayne is, is a really cool Robin. I like that he's Bruce's kid and he's very entitled because he's been trained by the League of Shadows and Talia al Ghul is his mom. And he's just so pompous. But at the same time, he is, you know, as you read not only his books, but you read across the spectrum, you know, kind of those crossover books where he makes an appearance. He's a very good friend. Um, he really cares about a lot of people. And I just, I don't know, I've really grown, while well, it started as Mortal Kombat and I was half reading a lot of it, it's really evolved and changed and gotten so much better over the past couple of issues. All right, next one I've still got to read, Swamp Thing 13. And, uh, you know, I have to admit, this is the first issue of Swamp Thing I bought outside of Swamp Thing Green Hell. Swamp Thing Green Hell. Um... You know, again, sometimes I just don't realize, you know, I think I remember seeing some people on TikTok saying, hey, you got to get issue nine, like Swamp Thing issue nine or something like that. And they're like, it's amazing. It's going to be so dope. And I, I, I didn't, <laughs> but the thought lingered and I didn't realize it was such a short run book. 16 issues is not long to me. Um, so I don't know. I'll probably end up going back. But hey, I look at it like this. I can read at least from where I'm starting now to the end. And everything else, I can either look for and, you know, search it on on an internet forum, or um, I just make a list, a convention list, and then that gives me things to go look for. Because I, personally speaking, when I go to conventions, one of my favorite things to do is dig in all of those comic boxes and, like, look for hidden treasures. Now, they know what they have, but, you know, there are there are issues of, of series that I'm missing that I want, 
um, that I've been looking for for a long time. And sometimes I find them and I don't, I can't justify the cost. Um, sometimes I just flat out can't find them because they're so popular. So, um, you know, I getting to add, if I like the, you know, the next couple of Swamp Thing issues, you know, adding, um, a lot of that stuff to my list, uh, of, of back issues to look for is awesome. Like, I hope I find it. I, I don't know. That's just, I, I, I like the hunt for some of that stuff, especially, you know, like I said, jump in, don't deprive yourself. Um, or the other thing I could do is I could just always buy the trade when it comes out. But, you know, sometimes trades, I get, I, I love buying trades. Oh man, I, I can buy a lot of trades, <laughs> but they don't always go red. Um, you know, single issues always take priority. And I always say, Oh, well, once I get caught up on my Marvel, my DC, then I'll jump in. Um, but typically I'm buying non superhero books in trade paperback format. So that's when I'll jump in and, um, <laughs> I'll just read those. Like I bought, uh, I, I bought the trade paperback for, uh, the me you love in the dark. And I remember going, okay, I'm all caught up. I want to jump in and read, uh, you know, the, the justice league, new 52 omnibus that I bought. Um, Nope. I read that one, <laughs> the me you love in the dark. And, uh, it was, it was haunting. It, it was wonderful. Um, that was just a little haunted house book and I loved it. So, um, again, I like horror. Like I find comfort in a lot of those types of, of stories. Um, another book I have on my list to read is Teen Titans Academy 15. It's been an okay series so far. Amazing Spider-Man 2 with John Romita Jr. back doing the artwork. Um, you know, I feel like it's weird that they did everything with Spider-Man. Um, they went through the whole Beyond story arc, and then when that ended, they, they just started with a fresh number one. Um, they could have continued to go, but I guess because Ben Riley got his own spinoff little five-issue series, uh, they wanted to bring it back just to Peter Parker. That's fine. Uh, I, I, I love John Romita Jr.'s art. Um, though I, now that I'm older and I'm looking at it, everybody's got a very square, blocky face, um, which is fine, but it's just, um, I don't know, I remembered it being a lot more detailed when I was younger. But I've been wrong in the past. Boy, all this talking makes my throat dry. <laughs> Avengers 56. Which has been fun. Um, Devil's Reign Omega. Man, Devil's Reign really impressed me. I had never read a Chip Zdarsky book before um, diving in. I, I think I got Daredevil issue 30. The, the you know the issue of Daredevil where it's stopping Matt Murdock it went into Devil's Reign and then Daredevil um the woman without fear started up and so I got the I got the last issue of the book and I went whoa this is really freaking good and then Devil's Reign came out and I remember reading the first couple issues and I was just blown away and then um Daredevil woman without fear I've been reading through and man Chip Zdarsky is just he's amazing his writing is just incredible. And um, I'm really excited because he's taking over Batman now that James Tynion is done, uh, which I'm very, very sad about because I really enjoyed Joker War and Fear State and everything that they were building up to. I, you know, I, he just did a phenomenal job. But now that Chip Zdarsky is taking it over, I'm all in. I mean, I love it. I'm so excited for that. Um, Incredible Hulk 7. Guys. Whoa. If you're not reading Incredible Hulk right now, change that. Go buy it. Like, find issue one, find it, you know, get a trade, whatever you got to do. Read this freaking book because it's crazy. It's crazy. Donny Cates did it again. And, guys, okay, look, let me just go through this really quick. So, Incredible Hulk, you know him, the big green machine. Well, in this series, Bruce Banner's found a way to split the Hulk's body, his rage, and Bruce Banner into three different personalities. He makes the Hulk's body a spaceship. <laughs> he takes Hulk's rage and he puts it in the engine room. And he, Bruce Banner, sits in his brain and controls the spaceship. And he powers the spaceship, like the thrusters, like where like the fire would come out for the engines. 
with the Hulk's rage by when he pushes forward on this lever, it increases a level of difficulty of bad guys that are thrown at Hulk in the engine room. And I think they're like an illusion or whatever, but the higher up he goes, the harder the bad guys are. So like it starts with one and it's like, you know, level one's like low level bad guys for the Hulk. But then as it progresses up, like I think they went up to nine and he was fighting celestials. He was fighting all of these major, major, major bad guys. And like he fought like zombie, uh, the zombie Avengers and the zombie X-Men and stuff like Marvel zombies. He fought this giant Wolverine, um, that was like 30 stories tall. Like it's just crazy, crazy, crazy. So he gets pulled in to a gamma, a gamma wormhole or something. Anyways, that another universe's, uh, Bruce Banner who doesn't have Hulk powers set up. And in that that Bruce Banner actually turned the entire planet of people uh, that he lived on into hulks, creating them all weapons. And then they would eject them into this dark dimension. And he tries to pull them out of the dark dimension to experiment on them. This is how I remember. I could have some of the details wrong. But then he, uh, so he pulls in Hulk, the spaceship, and they throw everything at him. And it's this crazy, huge fight. Like, it's the, the book is just insane. I don't even know what else to tell you about it other than you just got to read it. It's just, it's so crazy. Last up that I have to read, I've got Spider-Man 2099 Exodus. I'm not sure if this is a one-shot. I hope it's not because I want this, especially with Winter Soldier 2099, I want this to be an ongoing series. But I found a lot of those things that I've I've really been wanting to be ongoing series turn out to be one shots or like two or three issue story arcs. And that's kind of a bummer because I want long runs. Like I want long stories with the same character. And I don't know if just that's just not popular anymore or if that's not, you know, if the industry is so hellbent. Sorry, I'm putting comics away. Um if the industry is so hellbent on getting number ones, you know, into people's hands to like start fresh, get a new number one, things like that. Like, um, I don't know. It just, it just bugs me. Cause I, I'm in it for the long haul. Like I want to have, you know, issue 600 of something. I want to have the full run. I want to do the whole thing. Like, I don't want to have, you know, issues one through five, like what Silk does. Oh, Silk is a great character and a great book, but I hate that it does like five issue arcs and they all start with issue one. And you have to remember the order that they released and organize them in the order that they released for it to make sense. Um, which, you know, again, that's a first world problem, but I, if you're going to keep the title, keep the title. Like don't, don't do little titles here and there and then have them do short runs because just to get the number ones and, and personal opinion guys, and it may be unpopular, but I mean, these modern comics are never going to be worth anything, you know, unless there's a movie made out of them or, you know, some new character like a punchline or, you know, something like that. You know, there's a new character that, that kicks it off in a series or something. Um, you know, I, I think, I see a lot of people and I follow a lot of people on, on TikTok where, you know, they're, what they do is they, they buy weekly books and they buy every variant they can. And then they send them to CGC and get graded. Um, and they try to get nine eights and that's cool. Like, I'm glad that that's how some people want to collect. I mean, you're preserving, you know, these stories and this history for ever pretty much. And I, I think that's super dope. Um, me though, I like to, I just want to read the stories. Like I want to keep them in good condition. You know, I just want to read the stories. I want to know the background. Um, I'm not a key hunter. Um, I, I tried to be, as you can see by, you know, what's going on back here. Um, I tried to be a key hunter for a little while and it just, I don't know. That stuff's expensive, man. <laughs> you know, like, I'm cheap, like three fifty nine. You know, I try to keep my budget for comic books to like a hundred bucks a week or under, uh, which is pretty easy to do. Uh, but you know, some of these books, like I would love. Oh man, I think everybody's grail that's an X Men fan is you know a giant size X Men, and those things are running like I think over like three thousand dollars now, maybe more. And I don't care how much I want it. I just can't justify that. So a lot of these like keys that I have here, they were ungraded, um, got nicks, got dents. I'd say they're probably, you know, 
not even fine. You know, they're, they're damaged. Um, but it's, it's, it's having that, that book of history, you know, that these are comic history. This is, this is something that, you know, has spurred us to be where they are, you know, where we are now, um, in the comic realm. These are stories that will be told and retold and retold and retold several times over. I mean, I will say there was the one moment that I had a lot of glee with. Uh, I went back and I rewatched Stranger Things from season one, starting, you know, with episode one. Yeah, because the new season was coming out and they talked about uh, Dustin and, uh, oh, I can't remember his name. They were riding their bikes home and they bet each other their X-Men 134s. And there it is right there. X-Men 134. I've got it. So that was, you know, I, from that perspective, like that, that proud ownership side, like having keys and having old books, that's where I think is really cool. And I love that part of the hobby and, and pr- kind of preserving the history of um, the comic books. Uh, but like to exclusively do that with new books or, or if my motive was to get into, um, you know, get into all of this with the intent of making a profit back. Um, I just think that's kind of a a losing deal. I I don't foresee a lot of money to be made, um, right now in, in collecting comics. Um, again, unless they do something pretty, pretty monumental with characters in either the MCU or the DCEU or the DEU, whatever they call that, their, their universe. Um, you know, HBO Max has a ton of great shows for DC books and uh, you know I think that's helped me get into a lot of the books that I'm into now um you know and and want to collect and look for those you know like okay Deathstroke was in Titans and Red Hood was in Titans and um you know you've got Doom Patrol and and some of these other characters um and those are really high quality shows and they're really really freaking good um but like Marvel it's like every time a new character drops um, or, or a character from history, you know, the book value shoots up like 30%. Um, you know, some books like when they did carnage and in venom two, I mean like though some of those books like skyrocketed, um, I, some of the stuff like the introductory book for group Groot, I mean, it's like two grand. I can't, I can't justify that on one book. I, I just can't. I want to, I really do. I, I can't though. It's hard. So new works for me, unless I can find really cheap old or like go to a garage sale. I don't know if a lot of you guys go garage sailing and, you know, look for old books there or estate sales. Um, I haven't because of COVID, but now that things, well, I say things seem like they're getting better with COVID, but my wife and I just went through dealing with um, one of the sub variants of Omicron um, and it sucked. It was pretty minor, but man, it, it sucked. Um, I do not want the real, like, full-blown Delta or any of that stuff. But uh, COVID is definitely still here. Um, you know, it sucked spending our Memorial Day weekend struggling with that. But, um, you know, I still wear masks and all that. But that being said, that's why I haven't been going garage sailing or to estate sales or things like that. I, I totally would um, if I could, if I didn't want you know i could wear a mask i know i could wash my hands i could go out there and do that stuff but i don't know i get really nervous especially after i just had it you know and it sucked so i I don't know i'm nervous it might have set me back on my progress of leaving the house (laughs) but that's okay um so a couple books that i i have read um that i think would be fun for us to talk about really quickly um i've got i've got a mix i've got marvel i've got dc um no other indies or, or non superheroes in here, but you know, I figure we could talk through some of this stuff and yeah, let's just, uh, you know, hopefully if you have some comments, feel free, drop them in the chat. I do have a little window up so I can see, but I'm still learning. So, um, I don't know if anybody's in here or not. And, um, Hey, that's cool. If nobody is, if somebody is welcome, I haven't seen you pop in. I have a very basic OBS and I'm trying to, uh, trying to see things as best I can, but this is my first ever stream, so I have no idea what I'm doing. So uh, bear with me. If you are here, welcome. Um, Hopefully you've been enjoying uh, what we've been talking about so far, and uh, it's given you a pretty chill day. If not, that's cool too, you know. 
Hey, and if you're watching on, on YouTube, when I replace this on YouTube, welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, you know, maybe I'll take some some of this stuff and, and put it up on TikTok. Uh, I don't know. That's like the only social media I would ever consider using, and I don't know why. Um, I actually enjoy scrolling it, um, and there's such a cool comic community on TikTok that I feel a little more open and welcome to it. Um, and I love that it's just like random anonymous. Like, it's it's great. I don't know. I really enjoy that app, and I hate saying that because I so I so denied it for so long. All right, guys and girls, let's chat about what I've been reading. First and foremost, we've got Action Comics 1043, Break Down the Walls. So this is not the most recent issue of Action Comics, but a couple weeks back. Um, if you haven't been reading this, essentially Clark Kent was on Earth. He got a distress call. He left Earth, and that was all covered in the Superman book. So now the Superman title is called Superman Son of Cal El, and that book is now dealing with John Kent or Superman and Lois's son, and everything that goes on with John learning how to, um, you know, be Superman um, and find who he is and what he wants to be in the world. While Superman goes on in Action Comics, he goes to a place called the War World, and the War World is led by a tyrant called Mongul. And it's, I mean, I can't believe I'm going to make a reference like this right now, but think episode two when Obi-Wan and Padme were in, you know, chained up in the Coliseum and they're fighting those monsters. And that's essentially what this is. Uh, Superman shows up with the authority. They are on War World. Um, they're fighting these people called the War Zunes. And they're in like a gladiator style of a fighting environment. Almost like in Thor Ragnarok when Thor is doing all that when he faces off with Hulk. And Mongul found a way to make the planet kind of like cloaked in the red sun of Krypton, which takes away Superman's powers. And again, you know, if I'm wrong on some of these details, you know, bear with me. Feel free to correct me in the chat. I, I don't remember all the all the fine details of everything. But essentially, Superman is just a human, um, and he is trying to save these people called the Philogians. And the authority gets frickin' rocked at the beginning. Um, Superman is in chains. The only person that makes it out is this guy called the Midnighter. And he kind of organizes this rebellion um, while Clark, or Superman, tries to keep the Philogian spirits alive. These slave people, these people that are doing, you know, gladiator pit competitions and things like that so we're just at the point in the story where the mutiny or, or the big riot is happening um superman's escaped they found a way to shut down what was oh no 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 they didn't they found this cave tunnel systems with this crystal called genesis and it's like the lifeblood of the planet and that exposure to that genesis has given Superman some of his powers back and so he's really kicking ass and we also learned just recently about the history of Mongul and we learned that Mongul is not a name but a title um, and it's a title from one of the very first creatures that found an alien that crash landed on the war zone planet and who whatever this creature was he took the arm he killed the the future being the alien being stole his suit and and wears it, and it gave him advanced powers and advanced strength. So whomever takes over the Mongul title wears that suit. So Mongul is a title, not a name, which I thought was pretty dope. Um, it was interesting learning more about that hero, or uh, that villain, excuse me. But the other thing that they set up, which I think this is interesting, and you know, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that will be upset about this, but they kind of set up Infinity Crystals, or infinity gems in this Superman book where they said, hey, there are these eight stones of all these different colors and they're scattered throughout the universe and whoever can find these eight stones gets to become the hero they were meant to be or gets a you know, a hero suit of power. Oh, that's my cat Thor. Um, Thor's got a brother named Loki and we do have him as well. Um, but yeah, he comes around. You'll see him 
you'll see cats jump up there quite a bit. Um, so I apologize uh, if they get in the way and they make the mic. You want to come over and say hi, buddy? You might see little tails <laughs> jump across here as they try to get on my lap and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so I mean, this Action Comics book has been a lot of fun. Um, you know, I've read a lot of Superman books in the past where he was on Earth and he was doing Earth, you know, protecting the planet and essentially doing what John Kent is doing right now. Um, but I like this, that this is off world. Superman's been weakened. You know, he's trying to save this, this massive group of people. And he's, I mean, for the past, like at least 10 issues, he has collectively failed in his assignment, which isn't something that you see happen to Superman quite often. Jasper chill you're okay buddy my dog is sitting in this giant beanbag chair just crying <laughs> see if i can show you see him that's jasper and he's just sitting there crying and then that's thor <laughs> let me get this back up on my monitor here okay um sorry hopefully that didn't make anybody like motion sick um, but yeah, I've, I've been enjoying this Action Comics run. Um, <clears throat> the artwork is just phenomenal. And I don't recall who the artist is on this one. Federici? I don't know. There's something about it. The, the, the images are just really soft. Um, it's not like a Phil Noto or a Frank Cho style, but it's, um, they're just really, really like softly drawn characters like they, they have a lot of definition everything's very well drawn but there's almost like this like haziness to the pages where it's kind of like you know uh this is a random way to describe it but it's the best one i can think of it's kind of like you know watching uh, a movie on vhs remember like the first time you saw like friday the 13th or something and you saw it on a vhs tape and it had a graininess to it it had a, a fuzziness it had um a blurriness to it there was just something about it where while you could see everything that was going on there was this this warmth that came out of those other features that you know was just part of the media um this book to me has that same quality Excuse me. This is Jasper. Jasper's going to hang with us because he's lonely. So he's going to sit on my lap. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's just a fuzziness. There's a quality about it that I just, I really, really enjoy. Um, so that's been wonderful. You know, reading the story has been interesting. It's been engaging. But at the same time, you know, it's been, um, it's very well drawn. It's great to look at. There's some beautiful visuals in there. I just, uh, I've just really been enjoying the action comics run right now. And I think it's been a really nice way, you know, for them to keep a Superman title on, you know, for people to buy. But then at the same time, you know, keeping the Superman specific book different because now John Kent has been running missions with um, Clark for some time and now he's stepping out on his own and he's learning what it is to be Superman and the challenges and that come with it and um, I don't think I have a Superman book here in my stack to talk about but I'm going to talk about it with you anyways because I really like that book you know a lot of people are ragging on that Superman book uh, with John Kent because he came out as bisexual and has a boyfriend and oh okay that's whatever um I think it's great I, I think the story is just in that Superman John Kent book is just amazing um you know it's lighter it's very um adolescent you know but he's a kid you know he's an early teenager late teenager he's learning what type of person he wants to be he's learning about himself um, he's learning that he's different, not only from uh, being a, in part alien, you know, part Kryptonian, and having all these powers, and dealing with the pressures of, you know, understanding the gravity of the, his actions um, can either hurt or help people. Um, he's had people die in his arms. He's learning that the superhero life is not you know, all fighting and then just going back home and eating shawarma, you know, he's learning there are grave consequences and, and the mental stress of and the weight 
that you hold when you have that kind of position. Um, I've really enjoyed that him discovering that about himself um, and, and, and the title and what it all entails. And, and I say that mostly with personal experience too, because I have um, recently taken on, you know, a new role at a company as of like a year and a half ago um, where I'm in a leadership position. Uh, I've got, a, I've got a team uh, that, you know, I support or that, and that supports me and, you know, understanding, you know, I never really understood the pressures that come with that title, um, in a corporate environment, you know, in a management title with, with people who report to you and things of that nature. I never really truly understood that and the gravity of that until now. And it's been a very difficult transition as you go from kind of worker bee to management where you realize that your actions and your words hold a lot of weight and it people really put you on a pedestal when you do the right thing and you can fall off that pedestal really quickly and you have to deal with that you have to deal with you know opinions of people and the things that people say and um it's it's a lot more difficult than i i thought it would be so i've I've enjoyed that because i put my own personal uh, you know, a growth, personal growth experience into that reading that book. So I really enjoyed, uh, John's story. Um, you know, as far as the bisexual stuff, you know, like it or hate it, it's there. Um, you know, and, and people deserve to have a book that's representing who they are. And I, so I think that's great. Um, you know, and I think, uh, the story has been very cute. Um, his burgeoning relationship, um, him coming out to Lois. Um, and it's, it's added a lot of tension in my eyes as well, because just as he came to terms with the fact that he's bisexual and he has a boyfriend and, you know, how do I tell my mom, just as he told Lois what was going on, here comes Batman as he always does. And he says, absolutely not. You can't date him because he can't be trusted. Um, and if Batman tells you someone can't be trusted, what the hell can you do? Um, but then the next issue, the most recent issue that came out with, with that Superman son of Kal-El, um, you know, we see Batman is talking to, um, Clark Kent's grandfather or sorry, Clark Kent's father, John Kent's grandfather. And he's, he's talking to Batman like a friend. You know, he's, and he's very honest. He's very open. They're just on the porch sipping coffee. And, you know, he's telling Batman that, you know, what to do. And you don't see that, you know, maybe Alfred uh, tells Batman what to do. And even then it's a suggestion. But Clark Kent's dad is really, you know, giving it to Batman. And he's telling him, like, I've raised Superman. You've never raised a Superman. Let me tell you, you know, you need to let John go. You need to stay out of this. John's a good kid. He can make his own mistakes. Um, and Batman just can't let go of that because the, in his mind, the threat of his boyfriend being part of a resistance community, um, is just too great that he could do something really bad. Well, John goes and susses that out really quick. And we find out that the revolutionary group that you know, his boyfriend was a part of was really because of how bad president Bendix was treating people and how they saved his life. And it's, it's just a really good story. So you get every side of the coin. Um, and you see John's very young, but has to make very, very hard decisions. Um, I also really like in the, in the Superman book, there's a lot of close ties to the Nightwing book where him and Nightwing, Nightwing is like his mentor. Uh, Nightwing, he looks up to Nightwing a lot. He's also very good friends with Damian Wayne. And so there's a lot of friendship between, you know, Damian and John. And it's just a very wholesome book. It's a very, very good book. So, you know, I I highly recommend if if you're looking to expand your thought process, looking to expand, you know, what what it is you're looking at and, and what you're reading and you know, pick this book up. Um, it's It'll make you question things about, you know, how you deal with situations. And I just, I think that's a great thing. That's like the beautiful part of, you know, comics and superheroes is I hold myself to a high standard on a regular basis. And I constantly am asking myself like, okay, 
I have to do this task that I don't want to do, but, you know, Spider-Man or Superman had to do X, Y, Z that he didn't want to do. And if I wanted to be like them, I got to do this little task. Because if I can't do this little task that I don't want to do, how could I ever consider myself to be hero-like and and selfless enough to pull a Captain America and, and to do these things, putting your life in danger where I'm like contemplating like I don't want to send an email because maybe somebody would be mad at me you know like that comic books really help me be better a better version of myself in my opinion because of that introspectiveness of the books and what they make me look at from my own perspective whether it's an exact match or I can just find similarities um, from the story to my daily life so I, I, I think it's a good challenge for everybody you know if you feel um you're not being challenged in your life or you want to be better, you want to change, you know, pick up some of these books, maybe with context or story that you're not used to or things that make you uncomfortable and challenge yourself, push yourself, read those books, find those areas of relatability within the characters that you maybe don't agree with all of their decisions on and see if that changes your perspective. Does that make you more empathetic? Does it make you um, able to handle things a little bit better, you know, what is that thing that you can do that you can bring to the table to change yourself, to improve yourself as a person? Um, and maybe I'm looking too into it, which sure that happens all the time, but, uh, overthinkers unite, but, um, yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of, it's a fun take that I like to have on comics. Okay. Next up. Batman Detective Comics 1060. The Riddler is back. Uh, You know, after the last run of Batman Detective Comics, everything around Arkham Asylum, Arkham Tower, you know, um, that story was so in-depth and so good and so deep that honestly, I don't know if if I'm a huge fan of this one just yet. Um, you know, the Riddler, first of all, the Riddler's got a, a goatee. That's a little weird to me, but I do like it. Um, he looks pretty cool. But as far as the story goes, you know, it's not as memorable uh, as, as the other one. And um, the art is amazing. But as I flip through this, you know, to jog my memory, because again, I can't remember everything with all these books I read, but it really focuses around Deb Donovan's daughter. Deb Donovan is a reporter and, um, you know, her daughter is a judge. Um, her and Clark go on a date and the Riddler is like terrorizing Gotham as he does, um, taking everything over. And I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't recall this book, you know, at least this issue, I don't recall it being as good as I thought it was. And, and I, I think I've kind of known from day one that, um, you know, or from the first arc of this issue that Deb Donovan's daughter was deeply, deeply involved with, um, the corruption. She's going to be the ultimate bad guy. She's going to get close to Bruce, you know? So I think maybe that's part of it because I wasn't a huge fan of, you know, I've, I picked up on a lot of that stuff fairly early on that, I don't know, and and coming off the Arkham Tower story, this one is just kind of falling a little flat with me right now. Don't get me wrong. I will always be buying detective comic books because they're some of the best writing I've read. This is really the first story um, that I've read so far since I've been recollecting over the past year, year and a half. This is the first arc where I haven't been totally engaged. Um, I jumped in to detective comics um and there have just been nonstop amazing stories, just nonstop amazing stories in that book between the Arkham Tower, which was the last arc, the arc before that was all about these like um, parasite, uh, these parasites that would get into people and you could like foresee violent crimes and violent deaths. And there was a, um, a crazed rich man, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he was gunning after Bruce Wayne because he thought Bruce Wayne killed his daughter. And so there was just so much tension and it like the writing has been consistently so amazing in this book. This story though, it, I I think it'll get better. Um, maybe I just need to reread it, but I, so far it's, it's, it's a little dry for me right now. 
Um, I did pick up issue one of Batman Fortress. Um, I did really enjoy this book. I think that this book was super cool. Um, it's, it's, you know, you, you read enough Batman books and they all kind of start to kind of run together, right? Um, but this one, you know, essentially it starts out, there is a blackout in Gotham. Um, some people try to rob Bruce Wayne. He kicks their ass. And uh, the police find a way to rig up a, the bat signal off of car batteries. Uh, but then they also come to find out that all of the prisoners in Arkham Asylum have escaped. And so now you have a blackout in Gotham City with all of Arkham's villains running amok. So Batman is out to stop them. And he runs into the Joker, and I believe he runs into Penguin in this issue. Um, yeah, Penguin is like drowning a woman, and he puts a stop to that. And Joker is driving a bus full of kids on a bridge, and... Um, he essentially he almost kills he almost kills Joker, but of course he doesn't. Um, but yeah, so it it was a really fun read. I think he's going to meet up with the Justice League now because I think they're still around, or a couple people of the league are still around. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't picked up Batman Fortress, pick up Batman Fortress. You will not be sorry. It's a really fun read. Really nice artwork in it too. Um, a little different. But, you know, and you may see, if you look to my side panels here, I've got, like, I just took pictures with my phone of comic pages. And uh, because I noticed this shitty webcam couldn't make the full 16 by 9. So I'm 4 by 3 with, uh, you know, instead of black bars, you got comic stuff to look at. But if you look for some of the Batman art, um, some of that art is from Batman Fortress because I did take some pictures of that. And if I see it, like, what's up now? That's the Jurassic League. Um so if something else pops up, you know, I try to keep my eye out. I'll call out the Batman Fortress artwork just if you want to get a glimpse of it. Next up, DC Vampire versus Vampire Hunters. Um, this is a one-shot book, which is fine. Um, I've been enjoying the DC versus Vampires. You know, when DC versus Vampires came out, I had a choice between that or Task Force Z. I didn't want to get them both, so I decided I would just get one. And I went with DC versus Vampires because James Tynion was writing that. Uh, and I like James Tynion. Uh, but at the same time, I regret not picking up Task Force Z uh, because I think that's more zombies while this one is vampires, obviously. But the story so far has been really engaging, um, you know, how the superheroes are turning each other into, pardon me, they're turning the, each other into vampires, and they are killing each other off, and they're being really tricky about it. So in this issue, um, Damian Wayne, Wayne, Robin, he is trying to get at the head of, like, like the head vampire, and he kills Martian Manhunter, or so we think, and he brings uh, Martian Manhunter's, uh, like his chess piece, to Black Skull, and or Black Mask, and um, he demands to see the head of the operation, which he gets denied, denied, denied. So he ends up bringing Alfred Pennyworth in a duffel bag, and he says, I want to see the head honcho, you know, I want to see the king. And the king is Nighthawk. It's Dick Grayson, and he's like the dude going after Bruce. And he knows that it's not Alfred, but Alfred right, right away. Um, it's actually Martian Manhunter who has shapeshifted into Alfred Pennyworth's identity. So they go after this big fight, and uh, essentially Damien, Damien lets Dick go, or Dick lets Damien go, however one want to view it. But um, yeah, it's it, it was a fun tie-in. I'm looking forward to the next couple issues of, of DC versus Vampires. It was consistently every month, I think, but I, I haven't, I can't recall seeing another book uh, for some time now. I imagine it's going to probably end around Halloween because that's when it released, and I think it's like a 12 issue run. Deathstroke Inc. If you haven't been reading Deathstroke Inc., you got to pick this one up. Go find it in your book bins. Find a trade. I think there's a trade out there now. This is amazing. And this is part of the Shadow War run. We were talking about Shadow War a little earlier. So what the hell is going on in Shadow War? One sheet. Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Um, so somebody dresses up as Deathstroke and kills Ra 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 Ghul. Kills him. He's dead. 
So Talia is looking for Deathstroke with the Leave Shadows, and Deathstroke is saying, I didn't kill him. It was an impersonator, but he's got his two kids with him. And um, we find out that his son, uh, which I think his son's name is Ravager, who dresses as Deathstroke as well, he is actually a clone of Damian Wayne. Wow, why do I keep saying that? He's not a Wayne's brothers. <laughs> Damian Wayne. Um, he's actually a clone of him, and they are related. And so that kind of throws Damien into like a crazy identity crisis. Um, and then he, not Damien, but uh, Deathstroke's son, Ravager, he dies. And it's just, it's just been crazy. Like everything, like there is so much happening, but Talia is still gunning for Deathstroke, but they don't know who that that person is um until batman and damien actually run into the imposter and they ask him what's going on and i'm, I'm gonna check back because i don't remember if they reveal it um the artwork in this book is so good too um oh yeah that's right so legal shadows is after deathstroke and uh, batman and robin are after deathstroke and batman inc is after deathstroke um but Batman Inc. gets on a jet. Oh, I'm sorry. Deathstroke's crew gets on a jet. And um, they, birth, they they get on a jet. They fly into Talia Al Ghul's airspace. And they essentially uh, they drop in to kill Talia Al Ghul. So it's just been all of this retaliation. And, you know, one side hits one. But we don't know who the other Deathstroke is that actually did kill Ra's al Ghul. So the mystery is hopefully going to be resolved in that uh, that Shadow War conclusion book that I just got, or the Shadow War Omega book. This is one I just thought I'd put back up there just because we have our uh, Crisis book back up. This is the issue zero, free comic book day, but I just oh, I love that cover, that foil cover. That's so cool. Love that. Harley Quinn 15. Guys, guys, have you been reading Harley Quinn? Are you reading Harley Quinn? If, if you said no, my question is, why are you not reading Harley Quinn? This book is dope. And you know what? The artwork, it's so different. Oh, God, this camera sucks. I got to get a better camera. Um, his artwork is so different. And uh, I hate, I was like, oh, I don't like it. Everybody looks the same. It's very like Archie Comics. Wow, did it grow on me. I am in love with this artist. Um, I hope they draw this book and it goes on forever because this book is so fun. And so if you're looking for a book where you have conflict, but you don't want the gravity of these big decisions and things like that, like you just want a fun book, like a fun superhero book, Harlequin. It's great. The humor is spot on. The story is, you know, so unique. Harley Quinn is trying to be reformed. She wants to help Batman. You know, she she breaks free of Joker. She forms a support group for villains and people who are in Joker's gang that are trying to live normal lives. And she just keeps getting met with bad guy after bad guy who either um, wants to date her or they want something else from her. And it, it, it's just so fun. Like, she was just in jail. Batwoman broke her out of jail, so now she's working with Batwoman. It's just, there's filler issues, don't get me wrong, but it is such a fun, fun, fun book, and it's very meta. It's got, like, a very Deadpool vibe to it, um, not to the point where, like, it knows that it's a comic, but it to the point where it, it will comment on pretty recent things that are in the world and, you know, media. And, and there's a lot of jokes like movie reference jokes and TV show reference jokes. And so it's got a very meta feel to me where it, it understands that things exist outside of Gotham or outside of, you know, the, the struggles that are going on right now. And I just, I can't put it down. I'm so excited to get every issue of Harley Quinn because they're, they're quick, they're easy, they're fun reads. And, um, there's just a, a really good time, and the artwork is so fun. So pick up Harley Quinn if you're not. You will not regret it. It's just been a great ride so far. A 
Amazing Spider-Man 1. John Romita Jr. is back doing his artwork. You know, I feel like Spider-Man Beyond was was so different from what we're what this book is. Um and and first and foremost, I am enjoying this. I enjoyed issue 1. I haven't read issue 2. I'm looking forward to it. But let me just tell you. You ever know you ever read a book with a character and you go wow they did something really different and really unique I don't know if I like it and then you slip back into that same old thing and you go this isn't as unique or different this is kind of the same old thing that's exactly what has happened to me with this book so Spider-Man Beyond the Beyond story I think it was like 15 or 18 issues and it was a really aggressive release schedule and I remember reading it and it was Ben Riley and there was so much crazy stuff going on where, you know, Peter Parker was in the hospital. Ben Riley was taking up the mantle of Spider-Man, um, but he was working for beyond corporation and he didn't realize they were evil and they were messing with his head. And it was just this really introspective book, identity crisis and, you know, different Spider-Mans and, and, you know, Peter Parker having to retrain how to be, how to be Spider-Man again. They're just really great books in that arc. And it was overall, it was a really nice story. And then you jump into an issue one, you jump into amazing Spider-Man again and they go, Oh, look at that. Peter Parker's having trouble with MJ. Oh, look at that. Peter Parker and and Aunt May are at a little bit of an odds. And it just kind of feels like all the progress they made with beyond they, they just kind of set it back to almost a time like in the early 2000s when Romita was drawing the book more regularly around like the 300th to the 500th issue something like that but um yeah it just uh i don't know it felt very familiar but at the same time with how exciting and fresh beyond was this kind of fell a little flat with me so i'm hoping it gets better Um, Again, I love the artwork. I love how Romita Jr. draws Spider-Man. I mean, he's just one of the best out there. Um, So I'm going to keep going with it. Absolutely. I have, you know, I know Romita's on it until at least July or August. They've got some big release books for, what is this, 895? I think it's for issue 900 that's coming out. You know, you've got your issue one here, but then you've got your LGY, and that's got the full. So this is LGY 895. So in five issues, it'll be issue 900 that's been released. Um, Savage Avengers. This was a fun one. Um, you know, I read Savage Spider-Man. Mm. You know, okay. So let's really quickly. There's these Savage titles coming out, right? And Nonstop Spider-Man turned into Savage Spider-Man, and I don't understand what the decision was behind that, but that was very frustrating for me uh, because I I was enjoying the sa- the Nonstop Spider-Man story a lot. And then it just ended with Peter Parker turning into some giant mutoid arachnid figure. And they said, hey, pick this up in Savage Spider-Man. And I thought, God darn it, they did it again. They ended another book after issue five. And then they started it with a different title under issue one. And so I picked up the first three issues just to see how it was going. And it, it, it really fell flat really quick. So I was hesitant on picking up Savage Avengers, but this one turned out to be fun. You know, we've been seeing a lot more of Deathlock lately, mostly in the Avengers book because of some of the time traveling. We've got Daredevil, the woman. Um, Conan is in this too. So that was another big driver. I love Conan the Barbarian. So um, this is starting out fun. You know, Cloak and Dagger, you've got uh, Anti-Venom, you've got Black Knight, you've got um, Wolverine Hulk. I, I don't know who that is. But either way, like it's... It's got a good mix up of characters. Um, it was the this issue was very Conan based, which I thought thought was awesome. So I'm really excited to read issue two. I always like to give it the benefit of the doubt, and you know I like the Avengers. I like these team up books. Conan on the Avengers that seems kind of like a, a no brainer to me. Um, so I'm all in on that. I think that's great. Um, next one I read Silk issue five. Again, this is kind of a little bit of a frustration because they had a five issue run. They ended for a month and then they started out another five issue run. Um, writing in this five issue run of Silk, um, the story was great. The main character, Cindy felt a little different, um, from the last five issue arc that I read. 
And that's fine. You know, different writers capture different things. But I thought that the premise behind this Silk Run was really fun, where Silk, uh, a, a Korean witch, is released from um, a museum, and she goes around and she's stealing the the life force of celebrities and influencers, people who have a large following of people, and that is regenerating the Korean witch's powers. She happens to get Cindy. Um, she steals her life force and turns her into like an 80 year old woman. Um, so this is wrapping up that story arc. I won't spoil it for anybody, but it was fun to read. Um, certainly not as good as the last one, but it was a lot of fun. It was a unique villain. Um, so I definitely highly recommend checking it out. If you haven't read Silk, um, and, and you like the spiders, you know, Spider-Man and all that, pick it up. It is worth it. Um, and it's a nice, uh, it's cool to get a female perspective on, being bit by the spider and being a spider person and so i i I really enjoyed that piece as well now this book this next book i'm going to talk about oh two issues in if you're not reading it please go pick it up I, i think you can probably pick them up anywhere but spider punk holy crap guys spider punk is so fun and if you can tell that's taskmaster and uh he's got that little jerry only girl now a lot of you might not know who Jerry Only is, but if you like the Misfits and you like punk music, you should. Um, so Spider Punk is cool. Um, first of all, I like that Spider Punk has his own little group of people. He's got Captain Anarchy and he's got uh, Ironheart. Um, Spider Punk is black, like Miles Morales. Not that that matters, but you know, it's it's not Peter Parker. And they have a band. And it's got a very Deadpool feel because Spider-Punk is young, he's um, excitable, he's full of vigor, and they get invaded by Taskmaster and his group of cronies. And I, I seriously, look up Jerry only and then look at Taskmaster and you'll be like, oh yeah, I totally see where they got that curl from, like the right down there. Um, but essentially, the Spider Gang, Captain Anarchy and Ironheart were doing their band practice and they were doing a lot of their, like they were living in their hangout was above a shield reserve of missiles or something. And so Taskmaster has been sent to take them all out. So it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fighting, a lot of fun references. Um, but it's set in a different, it's not 616 Marvel. It, it's in a different Marvel universe, but Oh man, it is so fun. And it is, um, if you like punk music, especially like, like I said, Misfits and older stuff, um, you're just going to love this book. It's a, it's a ton of, ton of fun. Uh, Thor, this is part of the Banner War series and eh, it's fine. I don't really have anything else to say about it, to be honest with you. I, um, you know, I, I like Hulk. I like that they have a little battle thing going on right now, but I, I, I'm just not a huge fan of where they're going with that. I, I'd rather Thor to have its own story. You know, sometimes a lot of these crossovers, when there's too many of them, it's just hard to keep the story straight, uh, at least for me. I used to have this huge tracker of, um, you know, I would write out each issue. I'd write my own little synopsis of what was happening in the book so that I would remember. And those synopses would get longer and longer and longer until it was like I was rewriting the whole book in this Excel. And it would take me days to get through it. And I was never reading books because I didn't want to write up the my write-up on it. Um, but that's one good thing that Marvel does that DC doesn't in all their books is Marvel always provides a recap of the story so far and gives you a little bit of information about the world setup and, and what going on in in the world in the universe of that book um i wish dc would do more stuff like that um but i'm very thankful that marvel does do stuff like that because it it really makes a world of difference um this book has been fun it's been funny wolverine um it's wolverine with deadpool and they're they're fighting and talking and arguing um but there's not a lot of substance to it outside of that it doesn't seem like it's going to tie in you know a lot of these wolverine stories um it's, it's almost like they're filler issues for big Wolverine events, like, um, you know, lives and deaths of Wolverine. You know, the stories, sometimes they tie back to X-Force. Like, for a while, they were tying back to the Hellfire Gala. They were tying back to X-Force. Uh, but now they're just doing, like, two, three-issue little arcs where they're their own little thing. Um, and it, it doesn't really matter to the greater universe or, or affect any other books 
um, that, that Wolverine is in. So, I mean, you can read Wolverine and I think, you know, it's easy to say you could read Wolverine and you can say, okay, that was fun. I had a good time while I was reading it. I smiled, I laughed, but at the end of the day, I don't need to really remember any of the details when I go into reading X-Men or X-Force or something like that. Speaking of X-Force, boom, X-Force 28. Been a huge fan of X-Force ever since I started picking up around issue 10 or 12. Um, Lots and lots and lots of focus on Quentin Choir. So if you are an Omega Love a Mutant fan, pick up X-Force because you're going to get a lot of Quentin Choir. And he is just awesome. Him and Wolverine and their team up. Um, You know, again, this is kind of starting a new story arc. Um, I'm not really... 100% 100% on on everything, but it has been a fun ride so far. You know, Quentin Choir is dealing with being broken up by his girlfriend. He is creating these, you can see these, you know, this juggernaut in pink. That's actually like a, someone that he created, he being Kid Omega, and um, they're using the DNA of these creatures. Um, Cerebro is. Cerebro has gone like rogue, I guess you could say. Cerebro is a, a machine, and they use the Cerebro to help resurrect fallen X Force and X Men and mutants on Krakoa, and it's become sentient, and it's trying to um, devour all of the mutants and then build. Uh, that's like its its motive is to devour and build, and it's already killed Forge, and now it's going after um it's going after Black Tom now uh, at the end of this issue. So. That was pretty fun. Um, I'd say if you had to choose, if you said, well, hey, I'm on a budget, one sheet, I can only read X-Men or I can only read X-Force, but I can't read both, go X-Force. Um, X-Men, you know, speaking of, I've got an X-Men book to talk through here. Um, X-Men's just not been engaging to me for a little bit now. I, I like what Hickman does, but again, I don't know, earlier in the stream, I was talking about things being a little too wordy. Um, man, these are just way too wordy in my opinion. And it, it, that's fine. Um, you know, there's good stories behind it, but there's so many, you know, it's like, I kind of wish they'd take like what they did with Inferno and now what they've got here with, um, Immortal X-Men and they'd kind of just keep one title because some of, there's so many things going on. X-Men books are so freaking complex and complicated. You know, you've got different planets, you've got different islands, you've got all these different, you know, there's like a game world with Cordycep Jones and, oh, there's there's just so much going on. It's really hard to keep X-Men straight. X-Force is a lot more simple, um, a lot better, easier way to keep things, keep things straight in your head, at least for me. Immortal X-Men 2 came out. It's pretty much the Quiet Council talking the whole time. Um, they fought like... Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. So they... The Quiet Council needed to elect somebody new. Um, Hope Summers volunteered herself. They chose Hope over somebody else, like a vampire woman. That vampire woman used the gates of Krakoa to create a monster. And if they killed the monster, they would destroy all the gates and for you know mutants to travel to essentially stranding people on 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 Arako on, or Mars um so there was a little bit of a villain but so much of of what this book is 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 just the quiet council talking and deliberating and not agreeing and then problems arising and then they solve the problems and then they go back to complaining about each other i don't know i'm going to keep reading it it might change but that's kind of where we're at right now and um, everything, Hickman changed everything. So the whole format of, of these X books are, are very much based on what Hickman did. So that means like as there's a lot of action, as there's a lot of story, they'll do a full page of like, an, this is what is said in an email and because they want to build lore and background. It's kind of like, okay, um, I don't like that it breaks like that, but I, I get I get why they're doing it. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot about this one. So lastly, I want to talk about this. I hate this place. Or 
if you are lucky enough to find the other title that says fuck this place and i want to find that that cover so bad with the fuck this place style because i love this book so far this is issue one it just came out like two weeks ago it is so 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 good and i say that because it's a non-superhero book it's a horror book so it's in my realm of what i like to do already but what's so cool about it is that it's so different so essentially um lesbian couple buys a, a farm or they inherit a farm from this uh aunt uh that she never really had a lot of exposure to didn't know a lot about and so they move in to kind of they're gonna fix up this farm and then they're gonna sell it for a huge profit and they never have to work again you know it's it's all positive going into the horror movie that we're about to start and they're going around the farm and um, one of the women at night sees this grow, glowing creature in the woods and it touches her neck and someone's banging something around outside. Um, it touches her neck and it transports her to these train tracks and she barely gets away and gets unstuck from the train tracks before a train mauls her over. So she goes home, she tells her wife, there's these things in the woods, uh, I'm freaking out. And kind of all hell gets let loose after that. Their house gets surrounded by these green people. And they end up finding this little room in the house filled with VHS tapes. And they put the last one in. And it is her aunt apologizing to whomever took on the house. And then saying, you know, not to let the green things touch you. If you see the antler man or the horned man in the woods, you need to run as fast as you can away from him. You know, so they set up this very foreboding uh, story around the property that this woman just inherited with her fiancé or with her wife. And it's all about aliens and monsters and zombies and werewolves. And, like, I have a feeling, like, they're going to get thrown every type of monster they can to survive through and then some. Uh, So this little safe room that they have, I think they're going to see a lot more. Um, They're going to see a lot more people in there. So it's uh, a lot more monsters, a lot more fighting, and um, I recommend it. Like, find it right now. Like, get issue one. This would be a great, fun, supernatural TV show or even a movie um, just based off that first issue's premise. So if you like horror books, if you like something a little different, go out, get I Hate This Place, or if you can find it, the title that says Fuck This Place. I'm still looking online for it. Um you will not be disappointed. It has been a super fun ride, and that's just in the first issue. Okay, well, hey, that covers all the comics that I've been reading, what I've been talking through, so you kind of got an idea of what I like. You know, I'm always open to listening. If you have different opinions, I'd love to hear them. If you have books that I, I didn't show that I'm reading or that you're reading that, you know, you think other people should be reading, drop them in the chat. You know, come back on. Um, let me know. Let's talk about it. Uh, you know, feel free to go to my YouTube and you can throw that in the comments there. Um, my name is One Sheet Comics on YouTube. Uh, I'm still getting everything set up. So, it, you know, it'll get easier. I'll have links. I'll do all that stuff. But um, I wanted to also show you something. Uh, give me one moment. I'm going to move some things around here. Again, I'm, I'm getting used to how these uh, streams work. And the, these docs and all of these activity feeds and all this stuff that I can put in here. Oh, that's better. Um, but I wanted to show you guys something I've been working on. So I, I've been kind of depressed um, over COVID and especially over the winter. And getting back into comic books has really been a good boost to my ego and, and helped me out a lot. And my wife and I, we don't have any kids. We've got uh, four cats. We've got two dogs. And... You know, we don't always use all the rooms in our house. And so one room I kind of designated as my, like, reading room or my nerd room. And I've not really done much with it. I've not given it the love it deserves. I've just kind of been letting it sit there and just throwing all my crap in there. But now that I'm back into comics really big and um, I've been starting to go through and organize this room a little bit more. And I wanted to show you guys a little clip, uh, an image of what I put together yesterday. This is what I spent a lot of my yesterday doing. Um, and I'm so, I'm so into it because I think it's so cool, but let me, uh, can I make this full screen? Sorry guys. Give me one moment. Maybe I can't make it full screen. Oh, slideshow maybe. (laughs) 
Oh, and there's my dog. Shh. Hey. Oh, Jasper. Hey. It's okay. You had a bad dream. He's an old boy. He's like 14 years old, so he uh, he has bad dreams sometimes. Um, anyway, so this is... Oh, and I got it in slideshow mode, so let me see. If I go here, and then I go slideshow. Hey, Cody. My other dog just woke up. So you can kind of see this is what I've been working on, um, putting this little room together. Oh, okay, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, this is so cool because if you check it out, like I put these little floating shelves up yesterday and I put my books up there. You know, just some of the ones that I don't have the ability to frame. I just haven't bought new frames for them yet. So these two books are from the uh, Dark Phoenix run. I've got a little Doctor, uh, Doctor Strange Q fig. I've got a Cyclops Q fig and a Boba Fett figure there. On this shelf, you know, I've got Days of Future Past and I've got another... Um, I think this is also a run from the um, Uncanny X-Men, the Dark Phoenix Saga, with a little Hulk Q-Fig and a Deadpool Q-Fig. Uh, over here, I've got my Spider-Man, I think it's issue 25, and then right here, you can't see it very well, but this is kind of like my pride and joy for Spider-Man. This is a Spider-Man issue 33, which is the la one of the last issues, or like the second to last issue that Steve Ditko ever worked on. Um, I'd say if I was to grade this, I'd grade it like a 4, but, you know, again, it's it's having the comic history. It's it's having that piece of things, you know, to preserve for my own of where we came from and where we are now that I like. I've got a little Rocket Raccoon Q-Fig and a Spider-Man Q-Fig up there. Here's the uh, Iron Man Demon in a Bottle, as well as, um, golly, there's a lot of glare on that. I can't even tell what that image is. Oh, that might be uh, the Midnight Train X-Men with... Um, it's what Wolverine and Kitty Pride on there. Anyways, I got a Groot, a little uh, Soldier 76 figure, and my wife got me this little Star Trek figure. Um, it's my head 3D printed uh, on a on a Star Trek guy's body. And you can see I've got this cool bookcase here that I bought. I got this on Amazon for like, I don't know, maybe 100 bucks. But I put all my, it's the perfect size for my short boxes. So I do my short boxes. Um, these are all Marvel. And then these are all DC. And then this is um, non-superhero, non-DC, non-Marvel books. So, you know, I kind of go through. You can see I used to do little index cards where I would write what was in there. Now I'm throwing in just the covers because I can. So, like, I've got the newest Captain Marvel, Knights of X1, Spider-Punk 1, Cordyceps Jones. Um, that's the most recent X-Men cover. Batman, Deathstroke Inc., uh, Death of the Justice League, Shadow War, um, but it's cool. like So that's kind of where I keep all my, my short boxes, and I've got a little room to expand, which I definitely need because these Marvel books are just stocked. Like, they're jam-packed. I got nowhere else to move books. Um, and then this poster right here, this Guardians of the Galaxy poster, I actually bought this on eBay. This was a poster that was up in a comic book store. And I like doing that. Like, I like to have comic merch that was like actually in a comic book store because it kind of gives it that that feel uh, like hey man I'm, I'm in a comic store I haven't hung it yet I just got it in the frame but uh, got my little Milano and my Nintendo switch over there but yeah that's kind of organizing all that yesterday and, and getting things put together with it because I thought that was pretty cool um, but yeah you know it's just a, it's a fun hobby it really is and I've really been enjoying uh, getting back into it and I you know honestly for my first stream and uh, you know Nobody's even, nobody's even here, which is fine. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's been fun to talk about comics with everybody. It's been fun to, um, it's been fun to introduce myself. Hopefully, you liked what I had to say. Um, but man, my throat for my first stream, boy, my throat. I've been talking a lot, guys. So um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and and call things for the day. Um, I guess my dogs are getting up. I gotta take them out. But um, I'm gonna try and do this every weekend at least to start. Um, a couple more days a week. I'm going to figure out a schedule. My wife streams as well. So it's been, uh, you know, it's kind of a piggyback, uh, me and her to find that right time. And I'm a morning person anyway, so this just kind of works. But, um, yeah, I mean, we don't have to talk comics. We can talk anything nerdy. Um, you know, I like board games, D and D, um, you know, collecting figures and I'm trying to get into 3d printing and more mini painting. Um, I like to build models. So, I mean, I really, I kind of like Jack of all trades, master of none. I, I, I'm most involved in comic books. 
Um, that's really my, my hobby of choice. So, you know, if, if you feel like you want to jump in and feel free to jump into the chat ever, if you have things you want to talk about, you want to talk about the new Obi-Wan show, you want to talk about some of the new Star Trek shows. I haven't watched them yet. I'm very behind, but I'm, I'm working on it. Um, you know, we'll talk about anything in here. Uh, I, I do play games. I've got the Avengers game. Um, I can play games on here too. They're going to be mostly single player. I don't do a ton of multiplayer online stuff. Um, which is fine. I, I, I just like story based stuff more than anything. Oh, you saw Thor earlier. This is Ellie. Ellie, say hi. Sorry. Sorry, girl. This is Ellie. She was my first cat. Um, my first pet on my own, actually. So we are very, very close. She's an awesome cat. Um, but yeah. So, like I said, I'll try to do this, you know, every so often. Uh, I, I personally like the mornings. It's a cool way to, like, chill out and just, like, you know, have some coffee, talk about stuff that we're into. Um, but if you'd like something, you know, if there are other topics or if there are days that you think would be cool, um, you know, I'm open. I'll I'll definitely give them a try. Um, I do have a TikTok. It's, you know, if you go to TikTok and you type in One Sheet Comics, um, I haven't put any out yet. I'm going to try working on getting my TikToks going. Uh, that's probably the only social media I'll use. Um, I don't really use Instagram, Facebook, I don't care about. So, yeah, One Sheet Comics will be my TikTok. And that's also, um, let me pull it up here really quick, actually. I think I'm a, my YouTube, I think, is actually One Sheet Comics as well. I'm still setting everything up, guys. I apologize. Um, it's funny how you can do all that stuff and you can forget just what goes into setting all these different accounts up. And <clears throat> Oh, it's One Sheet Show on YouTube. So it's One Sheet Show on YouTube. And what I'll do is I'll just take these recordings here. If you happen to miss one, um, you can go ahead, you can subscribe over there. And I'll always, you know, if you don't go, uh, don't have the ability to go back in my profile to look at old Twitch streams, I'll definitely, um, I'll post all my stuff on YouTube. So you can go and you can check it out on YouTube and watch what we were talking about the last time that I did this. But um, yeah, I mean, open to suggestions here. Again, it's my first stream ever. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just uh, talking about stuff I like. And if you like it too, that's awesome. If not, that's cool. That's okay. You know, um, but feel free, you know, always happy to talk about whatever. Um, hopefully you enjoyed and, uh, thanks again for tuning in if you did. And, um, I will see you next time that I stream. Thanks guys and girls. <laughs>